Thank you. Just to let all of you know, too, it's like, this is, I'm emceeing the event, but I'm also working, and the, the headline that I'm getting out that everyone just seems to be talking about today, just interviewed Congressman Garcia, um, some of the panelists as well, is Census 2020, and how important that the community, the Latino community, feels that issue is. So today, keep your fingers crossed, I'm gonna get back to the station. Hopefully, um, at the moment, it is logged for the four o'clock news. So, so just to let you know that this is such an important issue that we're going to take it to the next level, talk about it on TV, talk about it as a news story today, and just to make sure that those issues are covered. So for all of you who are coming up to me and saying, this issue, that issue, I have this story idea, I just wanna say thank you, because you are seriously my conduit to all news stories that come to our direction, and I just really appreciate that, and I love getting bombarded. So. Thank you for stopping and talking to me. And as we continue the program now, I want to thank those folks who I just grabbed Congressman Garcia and said, I'm sorry, you can't even sit down and eat yet, sir. You got to come back here to the camera. So as we continue this program, too, at this point, I'd like to introduce Senator Iris Martinez and Senator Tony Munoz. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think this morning, uh, it was funny because we're talking about the Fabulous Five and the youth that's coming in. Tony, we are the official seniors of the Latino Caucus. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we all love you all too. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. And you know what, I wanna just, uh, in a very somber note, you know, this is, has been a very difficult uh, year for us in the, uh, in the Caucus uh, Foundation because we lost a very outstanding man and today we're gonna to do tribute to somebody that we have not been able to fill that hole. Uh, he was someone that from day one stepped up when he was called and he took over basically our caucus foundation in a way that we never thought somebody had that commitment and that passion and wanting to really uh, do a lot with this, with this uh, caucus and the foundation itself. And I'm talking other than Michael Gonzalez. As you know, To his family sitting right here, we feel, we feel the pain. We continue to feel the pain. This year, the hole was so great because we all wanted to, where's Michael? Michael, know that Michael wasn't there for us, but let me tell you something, in spirit, oh, over here, everybody's on, the, the family's all over, got you, okay, here. Family, family, got it, all right, I don't wanna miss anybody, but I wanna just say that the family, the family, thank you, thank you, Thank you for sharing him with us. Thank you for letting him spend so much time, especially right around this time, that probably didn't come home at a good time and that they spent a lot of time. And his passion was the kids, the, the scholarships. That was to him uh, something that was so important. And that's why today that scholarship uh, is gonna be named behind, after Michael Gonzalez. Michael W. Gonzalez was one of the founding members of the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus Foundation, having honorably and graciously served as the vice chair of the foundation's system and establishment 17 years ago. That man was committed to us. Many of us still refer to Mike as the heart and soul of the foundation, and he will always remain that for us. He took great pride in our accomplishments and unselfishly and tirelessly continued to promote its mission. He never received a dollar for the thousands of dollars he did for thousands, thousands of dedicated hours to the ILLCF. Mike was a mechanical engineer and he demanded precision in all of the ILLCF activities. And believe me, he wanted every little note, he wanted every little receipt. Michael was real good about making sure that we was accountable. He oversaw our financial rec records, the fundraising, student scholarship program, events, and much, much more. He was particularly proud of the hundreds of scholarships presented to inspiring and talented Latino students to help defray college expenses. Mike took great pride in his family, his work, his friendship, and his Latino heritage. All of these combined to make him the greatest person, at least on this earth, uh, that we were able to share uh, with and be part of his family. We will be, he will be so missed profoundly. 
I would not like to turn over this to my colleague here, Tony Munoz, that will present um, a presentation to the family. Tony. Thank you, Iris. Good afternoon. If we can have Letitia, Mrs. Gonzalez, and his daughter, Giselle, please come up to the podium with us, please. Whereas Michael W. Gonzalez was co-founder of the largest Chicago-based Latino engineering firm, and whereas Mr. Gonzalez grew up in Pilsen, remained committed to the well-being of his community, and whereas Mr. Gonzalez was dedicated and loyal husband to Leticia, a loving father to his daughter Giselle, a devoted son, brother, uncle, and cousin to his extended family, and whereas Mr. Gonzalez an advocate for Latinos to build and maintain a significant presence and participation in the construction industry as chair of the board of the Hispanic American Construction Association, known as HACIA. And whereas Mr. Gonzalez graduated with honors from St. Ignatius and received his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the U of I at Chicago. And whereas Mr. Gonzalez Co-founder, the nonpartisan Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus Foundation, served for many years as its vice president and worked tirelessly to promote higher education opportunities for Latino students through the foundation scholarship program. And whereas Mr. Gonzalez showed an extraordinary courage and optimism in dealing with his terminal illness. And whereas Mr. Gonzalez will be eternally remembered for all he did on behalf of his family community, and heritage. Therefore, I, J.B. Pritzker, Governor of the State of Illinois, do hereby proclaim November 22nd, 2019, as Michael W. Gonzalez Day in the State of Illinois and commend the renaming of the Illinois Legislative Caucus Foundation Scholarship Program to Michael W. Gonzalez Scholarship Program. Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you very much. Thank you for this honor. I truly appreciate it, my daughter and I. And I know that Michael would now like to turn the attention to the students. He was very committed to the scholarship program that the foundation has. He enjoyed delegating and having the committee review all the applications. And best of all, he enjoyed meeting the families and the students. And we have to support them, and this is a way through the scholarships to support them so that they will be successful and complete college. That's so important. So kudos to all the students who are recipients of the scholarship. Congratulations. And one day, I hope that you come back to your community to help the families, the organizations, and also to become a mentor. It is so important that you share your experiences and help because we need to increase our numbers in professional careers. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. What an important tribute there. And the family pictures, those are just beautiful as well. So again, a tribute to Michael Gonzalez, everyone.
So if you've been enjoying the snacks and beverages, that is thanks to PepsiCo. They wanted to give, make, the organization wanted to make sure you recognize them as well. So a round of applause for that, snacks and beverages. Um, also, scholarship alumni. So those of you who have had a scholarship before, more than 400 strong at this point throughout the 17 years. Some of you are here volunteering, I understand, volunteering your time. So stand up if you are a volunteer today. I know that's a tall order to ask. There's one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the volunteers. Wanted to recognize you today. Thank you. Um, and it's not too late, I understand, to get your mug with PepsiCo goodies. And how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is post anywhere. Facebook, I haven't had a chance to do anything just yet, but Facebook, Twitter, you know the drill. And again, we're using hashtag ILLCF2019. So if you post anything on that, we un I understand you're able to get a mug too. So there you have that. Um, Time for the highlight of the, e the, the evening. So you, I'm on a different warp zone here. Of the luncheon, I should say. Um, celebration here to award 25 college students scholarships to help them achieve their educational, their personal goals. So after the, uh, over the last 17 years, we have awarded more than $600,000. That's a lot of money to outstanding Latino college students. Thanks to all the support out there in the audience. So at this point, more than $600,000. So at this time, I would like to have Senator Aquino, Representative Hernandez, the co-chairs for this event, and also the treasurer, Steve Caramelli, to stand behind me. We're going to congratulate all the recipients one by one. And I also would like to invite all of the ILLCF members, so all the members, caucus members, please come up to the stage. I understand there are several of you. If you could please come up to the stage, stand right over here so that we could take pictures as well. And last, representatives Aaron Ortiz and Barbara Hernandez, please come to the podium and we're going to announce the names of all our recipients. So a lot going on there, so again, Senator Aquino, Representative Hernandez, and Treasurer Steve Caramelli, we're going to be congratulating everyone as they get their scholarship. And all the members, please come forward as well. And if we could have you stand right over here, members, so that we could um, make sure everyone has a picture. Those recipients. And last but not least, the two representatives who are going to be doing all the introductions, Aaron Ortiz and Barbara Hernandez. Buenas tardes. My name is Aaron Ortiz. I'm the state representative of the First District. Covers many parts of the southwest side of the city of Chicago. I used to be a college and career counselor, so being up here granting the scholarships and naming the students means a lot to me. Uh, I was explaining to a few people at our table that a thousand or two thousand dollars can mean a difference for a student on whether or not they attend a university. So I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors and whoever helped make this pos day possible today. Thank you. <laughs> Scholarship winners, as your name is called, would you please come forward to be honored? And after you are recognized, will you please remain on stage briefly for official photos? Maria Alarcón. <laughs> Evelyn Rivera. <laughs> Lilibeth Caballero. <laughs> Fabiola Ávila. Jimena Caballero, did I already say that? Yeah. Emily Diaz. Victoria Natalie Barajas. Angel Flores.
Elliot Flores. <laughs> Cynthia Gill. Arizay Guzman. <laughs> Karen Hernandez. Anthony Guante. Cindy Macias Soto. Scarlett Mencia. <laughs> Edith Mendez. <laughs> Jose Pelaez. Dalia Robles. Liliana Rodríguez. Vanessa Rosales. Barbara Ruiz Smith. <laughs> Itzel Torres. Adilín Villalpando. Congratulations to all the scholarship recipients. Picture time for all those students and stuff. Okay, excuse me.
Okay, thank you for that. All the scholarship winners, 25 of them. Uh, my understanding is $2,000 each. So all the students who are recognized today. Thank you very much to all of you. So as the students all go head on back, there is one student who wanted to step forward. Um, and I, I'm, I feel bad that there might be others too, but you get to speak on all their behalf. So we'll go ahead and let you have a say here. Angel Flores? Yes, okay. Angel Flores. This is Angel Flores, and you go where? Dominican University. Dominican University, everyone. One of the scholarship recipients. Um, so, first of all, hi. Um, I just want to restate something that Rick Nahero said this morning that really stuck in my mind, and that was that I, I'm sorry, we get to go to school, and this means a lot to a lot of us, especially for some of us who are first generation, such as myself. And, um, you know, it's not, a, it's not just that we're good students, but I think that a lot of our success has to do with you guys. You guys are the reason for many of our success. And I just want to say thank you to all of our representatives, our parents, and our teachers for, you know, bringing this opportunity to all of us. So thank you, guys. You know what I have to say about that? That is a young man who made it a point to come up here and say, I want to say something. And that says something in itself, right? <laughs> I was like, you want the microphone? Oh, okay, yeah, here, hold on. <laughs> but that's awesome, because that's exactly what it takes from a leadership standpoint, to be able to stand up and say, I'm leading the way on this one, let's do this, and that's what we have here, and to see that in the next generation is fabulous. So to each and every student, I'm sorry we can't have all 25 of you, but I just wanna say all of you are represented right here too through that voice. We hear your voices, and obviously the foundation thinks you're just as important for each and every person who received a scholarship. So your voice is heard as well. Maybe not literally, but we hear you, support you. Education is the key, that's all I gotta say. Education is the key. So what a great thing the foundation is doing, no doubt about that. Thank you guys. Moving on with our program here, I would like to introduce um, caucus members Lisa Duarte and Pedro Ceballos Candau. They're going to represent the Special Recognition Awards. Uh, he's going to use my script, so hopefully it's in order. <laughs> here you go. Okay. This one and these Where's here. Where's this? Where's the what? This thing? This is your right here. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. And then it goes to this part and this part. I'm a I'm a bad replacement for Lisa Duarte, but uh, <laughs> you. You got to come pinch hit. You're going to yeah. do just fine. I'll leave you up here with the script. You're all good to go. All right. So I, mean, I have to go through my to my phone because I only have mine. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, call Elliot Ramos to this stage. Here we go. Okay, Elliot is a great reporter. He working with Melissa Sanchez of ProPublica. Documented the extraordinary boarding on paid tickets that resulted in license suspensions and fees placing on low-income Chicago residents, prompting the city to take action. These and other examples of Mr. Ramos' insightful and deep reporting have profound, profound effects on the community. Elliot, here is your award. I can read. Of course, there's more than one box underneath here. Yeah. This may be it. Okay. 
Checking, checking. Yes, we got it right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You had the magic hand. I don't know. I was like, uh oh. Okay. So this says special recognition to Elios Ramos. In recognition, this is hard to read, of your commitment to investi investiga investigative re uh, reporting on behalf of the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus Foundation. Thank you, Elliot. So this is the one that I, that I uh, was supposed to do. Uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's an honor to introduce uh, uh, Moni Ruiz Velasco. She's, uh, she has devoted her life to the service of the community. For over 20 years, Moni has provided legal services, representation, and counsel to thousands of immigrants and their families. There is no greater issue affecting our community these days. Monique, will you please come to the stage? Okay. And this one I was able to find it by myself, you know? <laughs> so this says, special recognition to Moni Ruiz Velasco in recognition for your tireless service to the project to protect, I'm sorry, the rights of immigrant families on behalf of the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus Foundation. And this is really hard to read with the light here. You know? I just wanted to thank uh, the Illinois Latino Caucus Foundation, um, Leader Lisa Hernandez and Senator Aquino. I know what we ask isn't always easy, but our communities are really facing unprecedented harm. And, you know, as uh, Congressman John Lewis says, we have to cause trouble and we have to cause good trouble. So know that we will be coming back because we still have a lot of work to do and we hope to cause trouble with all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Okay, here's your script. <laughs> you got it all covered? Yes, thank you. Nicely done. Just according to script right there, everyone. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Congratulations to the award winners. Um, and had I known this earlier, I would have pulled him up to the stage at the very, very beginning and he could have like wowed us for lunch like he wowed everyone. I wish I would have seen the breakfast, but I heard you were fabulous. Where are you? I know you're over here, Rick nah Nahera. Where are you? Okay, there he is. <laughs> we want to thank him for returning. Uh, are you, you going to do a tap dance for us? No, so I really needed you at the beginning, and I, I didn't realize you were still here. I would have said, give me five minutes of funny, and you would have had the crowd under control. You, you, have, you, you want more five minutes of funny? Back by popular demand. I wish I would have known you I'm not even joking. Okay, I'm not going to do stand-up because it's a nonpartisan organization. <laughs> and that would make me start getting partisan. Um, I want to say this. I, I, I love Chicago, and I love the Midwest, and I think of my mother coming from here, from Boone, Iowa, and coming from the Midwest. And the way they got there, she told me a story. She goes, well, we were going from Mexico, and we went, ended up in Texas, and they were mean to us. So <laughs> we left. And we overslept, and we woke up in Boone, Iowa, and said, here we go, okay. <laughs> so that's how they got to Boone, Iowa, and that's really the truth. It was they basically ended up there, and they created this world. And what, they all, what she always taught me was so important about how we share this world together. It's not enough that one of us gets successful. 
It's important that all of us get successful. And it's not enough that we all get successful, all our neighbors get successful, all the Anglos, all the African Americans. Because the people who gave my first job in Hollywood was African Americans. They gave my first job. And the next person was Jewish, and the next group were women, and the next group were gay. And I looked at different crowds that would come to my shows and see that, and I kept thinking, this is what America is. This is what our country is, a community that just keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, I know I should be saying funny things, but I really thought about it, and I said, what I see here is even better than we have in California. You have a chance. It's true. It's true. <clears throat> Because this is Chicago, city of the big shoulders. That's what the poets have called this. And because we work, and no one works harder than Latinos. So no matter what, of course I had to come back. <laughs> because we do overtime all the time. <laughs> and I know that's what you're doing. And I think of the great men, and, and you know, I think of this all the work you're doing. And I look back there with those scholarship winners, and I look at them and I think, you're creating our future. That's our future. I see my kids and they tell me they're scared of global warming and they have you know, things like uh, live fire drills in, in our schools in, in California. Live fire drills, my, my daughter is terrified of that. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't do, my generation didn't do well enough to make sure that doesn't happen to you. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to keep reaching back to our gen next generation, to those scholarship, because what you recognize is our future in them. And to support them the way you do, it's amazing. And I've never had more fun than Chicago. <laughs> and nothing like the holidays was my valentine to Chicago, to the community here, to the people in Pilsen and Humboldt Park and all the Latinos here that are doing it every single day when you wake up because you're working for someone else. You're working for your family. You're working for this community. It's not enough that we all, one gets successful. All of us need to get successful. And we're going to. We are going to. I've seen the future. It's those children. And the future looks bright. Thank you. Thank you, Rick, very much. Appreciate those comments. At this time, can we please have come to the podium Representative Dalia Ramirez, who is going to introduce our congressman. I'm rooted and ready. There you go, see? It's, a, it's an inside joke with some people. Um, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Stacy mentioned, my name is Delia Ramirez. I'm the state representative in the 4th House District, representing Humboldt Park, a little bit of Logan Square, Hermosa, Ukrainian Village, Wicker Park, Bucktown, and East Village. Um, but as you could probably imagine, I was born and raised in Humboldt Park, and I'm not going anywhere. And that's why I'm rooted and ready. So it is my honor and it's truly my privilege to stand before you as a new state representative who just a year ago, I was still a Democratic nominee. It is more of honor that I get to stand here and talk to you about a man who has stood on the side of justice, on the side of commitment, and believing and investing in little girls and women like me. You see, Congressman Chui Garcia is one of ours. He's one of us. At the age of about nine years, he came to this country through El Paso, I am told. Came through Texas, and someone says his first meal was a bologna sandwich, am I right? And, and he probably doesn't eat bologna sandwiches, or still eats bologna sandwiches. That I don't know, I didn't see it in the bio. Um, but more importantly, beyond all those bologna sandwiches, Congressman Chuy Garcia is the embodiment of public service. He represents the 4th Congressional District of Illinois, and throughout his career, Congressman Garcia has always been a progressive voice for all people 
making sure that those that are impacted by a broken system have their voice at the table. Prior to the election to Congress a year ago, he was a Cook County Commissioner. In 1986, he was elected to represent Chicago's 22nd Ward. There's a couple of 22nd Ward people here, Representative Villanueva and others here, in City Council. Congressman Garcia also served as State Senator for Illinois' first district in 1993. Talk about public service. From community organizing to leading neighborhood nonprofits like Enlace, he has dedicated literally his life to public office, and he's always put community first, and he has never, ever left. He still lives in Little Village, neighborhood of Chicago, with his beloved, fierce wife, Evelyn. Yeah. Woo hoo, Evelyn. She was in the house, you would have known, you would have heard her a moment. He and Evelyn have spent their life building community and lifting others. Quite frankly, you heard me say at the beginning, it is because of this man's commitment. It is because this man sees what others may not see in young people who are not beholden to just anyone. It is because of men like him who decide that it is time to invest and have women like me, like Representative Villanueva, like Commissioner Amanaya, like Representative Ortiz, like judges like Beatriz Santiago, judges he's supporting now like Perla Tirado, and a number of other people that we get to stand here because of people like him. Let's give him a round of applause for that. It is because of people like him who when they say, I will support you, they don't just say it by name, but they stand with you and pick up that phone at 10 o'clock at night when you have no idea what's going to happen, but you're told you have to door knock again and again and again, and then do call time and door knock again and again and again, and then do call time. It is why we run. It is why we won. He believes in we, not I. He has been a progressive before progressive was cool and sexy. He has been the man of integrity, of conviction, and apologetic commitment to the Latino community his entire life. It is why we stand here today, and it is why I am so honored to be able to tell you that I get to introduce to you my congressman, our congressman, Congressman Chuy Garcia. Thank you. They only gave me 10 minutes, so you should sit down, because I am in a hurry here. Uh, thank you, uh, Delia, for that uh, introduction. You made me blush uh, two or three times. Uh, I still remain a pretty shy dude from Durango who grew up, oh, okay. <clears throat> who grew up on 18th Street. And, uh, you know, the American way, we moved to the Mexican suburbs of Little Village, <laughs> where, where this month, perhaps today, being the day, uh, I moved to 50 years ago. That's when I joined American suburbia in the Mexican suburb of Little Village, of course, <laughs> in the city of Chicago. So um, I, I want to first convey to you how excited I am to be here. My heart is racing. I don't know why, Miguel, but uh, I'm truly excited and so grateful to see people like Barbara Hernandez and Aaron Ortiz up here together because they are the youngest members of the Illinois House of Representatives, okay? <laughs> and... <clears throat> And it really gives you a snapshot of the future. And then you have Delia and Selena and, you know, the, everyone in the, in the caucus, but especially those who, are, who just got there and the company that is going to follow them especially. So I'm really, really, I'm giddy and excited for our community. 
I first want to thank the uh, Caucus Foundation for the invitation to be here for the 10 minutes, now there's about eight left, um, that I was asked to make some remarks. And uh, of course, I first want to honor my longtime friend and comrade, uh, Mike Gonzalez. Uh, I've known Mike for, since I arrived on 18th Street, 1965-66. I, I know his mother well. I know Letty and Giselle and many of the Gonzalez family. Thank you uh, for Mike and for all of his great work and his legacy, of course, moves on. And naming the scholarship after uh, Mike Gonzalez is truly the right thing to do. Uh, two, um, I want to uh, congratulate the Illinois Latino Caucus, all the women and men of the caucus for just a wonderful year in passing, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, 14 bills that protect immigrants and advance the Latino community in Illinois. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, to to Rick, Rick Najera's point, uh, California, take some notes, sisters and brothers. <laughs> Este, no somos tantos, pero somos mm, aquí. Um, so great stuff. Two, uh, congratulations on the Capitol Bill. The Capitol Bill, I know, because I got a chance to speak with many of you, will bring early childhood opportunities and daycare facilities and schools and parks and many other good things, including housing to communities all over Illinois, because that's where we are today. So congratulations on that. Uh, I also uh, want to congratulate especially what I was asked to focus on this afternoon, and that is the scholarship recipients. Congratulations on winning these uh, scholarships. Continue in your studies. No pressure, but hurry up. <laughs> Don't sacrifice your education for work. I did it, and it took me 20 years to get my bachelor's degree at the University of Illinois at Chicago, but I had a lot of fun, okay? So you learn in different ways, right? Uh, and I also got my master's degree coming right back in three years there while running in LASA, so I feel real good uh, about that. But that's not the way to do it. So I want to congratulate all of you uh, recipients because only you know how hard it was and you're getting ready for the future. Just think about the journey that brought you here thus far, because you're just beginning. And for many of you, it has meant long nights, two jobs, maybe some heartbreak, así es el amor, and a whole host of difficult situations. Whatever your journey, you're here today. We celebrate you. Maybe the cards were stacked against you. Many of you had to figure out your college applications by yourself pay your own way, juggle being a mom, or maybe work two jobs. Maybe during school you came across as an academic or personal obstacle that made you doubt whether success would be possible, but it is. But here is the thing. You are here and we are with you. We are all standing here today as a community, as a testament to the resilience of our community. When success seemed too far or unrealistic, you made it. The truth is, success never follows a linear path. It takes resilience to survive and to plow forward. It takes perseverance, grit, and it takes community support, and your community supports you. The path to higher education isn't always easy, and many students here need help along the way. Yes, College is way more expensive than it was 20 years ago when I was in school. And yes, with everyone in this room working hard to make college more affordable, we also recognize that students simply cannot wait any longer until we solve this crisis. Students and families need relief and affordable education now. This is why scholarships such as the one you're receiving today are more important now than ever. This is the community that wants you and needs you to succeed. Congratulations, recipients of the Latino Leadership Scholarship, rather. Um, 
Okay, I did what was asked of me. They asked me to be inspiring, but I'm going to be challenging. Let me tell you why. We need you in this critical time and in this juncture that our country is living and especially our community. Why? Because the attacks over the past four years are unprecedented in our nation's history. And the solution and the response should be your education and your success. But your success is also linked to the success and our ability to pass fair and just immigration reform and institute new policies at the federal level. Because I don't know if any of you are DACA class, but we need to fight for them. We also need to remember and to fight to change policies like the migrant policy at the border that sends people back to Mexico in circumstances where their lives continue to be in danger. Very, very important. So immigration reform and leaving no one behind should always be on your minds as you become the successful scholars in the next few years and as you become the next generation of leaders of our community. Two, in Congress, we have passed out of the House of Representatives over 275 bills that advance the well-being of all Americans. Many of them have been bipartisan bills, but they are stuck because the Senate refuses to be a deliberative body refuses to debate and to vote on important issues of public policy, including the Dream and Promise Act, which is a step forward in just immigration reform. But two, what can we do at this juncture? The census next year will have a huge impact on the fate of our community, that's F-A-T-E, with a lot of faith, of course, because we are a people of faith, whether one is a believer or not. All of us have lots of faith about the future. It is a part of our essence. But the impact that a census will have will be so critical. Why? This is the first census in our history in this country where we are America's largest minority group. This is the first census. Never before have we been here. Yes, we've talked about the decade of the Hispanic, we talked about the year of the woman, and you know, many other things that we are continuing to strive for, but this is the critical juncture of the well-being of our community in American history, and 2020 is a critical, critical time. Why? because we were successful and it took going all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court to prevent the citizenship question from appearing on the ballot. We beat the guy that put it there and all of his enablers and we're gonna beat those forces again without becoming partisan here this afternoon, I think. Two, census is directly related to redistricting. And Senator Del Valle, in, among many other titles that we address him uh, by, pointed out the critical nature of it. But for America's largest community, the census and redistricting are so critical, and it's so critical that we get both of them right. Because the census will determine how large our political influence in Illinois will be, but it also has to do with all those other things that we value. Early childhood and our children, access to health care, school facilities, and where our children attend school, the future of higher ed. If you care about potholes on your street, the census has lots to do with that. It's how we allocate so many important resources in our society. We've got to get it right. And the political side of the census, we are the community that has the most to win 
and the most to lose if we don't get it right. So overcoming confusion and uh, confusion and fear are critical. And I call on each and every one of you and our scholarship recipients especially to help us make the difference. This will be the first census carried out online using computers. Young people can be a critical factor in ensuring that all of us are counted. So let me one more time say it. It is critical to the future of our state, our county, our city, and the empowerment of our community. Just like you got a glimpse of what future leaders in our midst will be, whether they choose the arts or education or decide to become lawyers or engineers or scientists or doctors, if we don't count, we won't have the resources we need to achieve our full potential. One more piece. The, there are in America about 37 million people who are eligible to become legal permanent residents. How many votes decided the last presidential election? Imagine the impact in House and U.S. Senate races of that many people showing up at the polls, even half that many, even a third of that many. It is pretty revolutionary in terms of enfranchisement of a community that has been among the most disenfranchised in contemporary America. That's why it is so, so important. So as we strive to redefine what America has become in the 21st century and the future of our country, we are central to that. We are a key ingredient to that, but only if we make it count. With Latino and Latina populations in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida, Texas, it is a powerhouse of potential that needs to be unleashed. And it only happens if we get counted and if we redistrict fairly and under the right principles. So scholarship recipients, that's really what I wanted to tell you as well. That the future of our country depends on the well-being of our community. And if it will remain true that we will continue to have a democracy in our country, if it is true that we continue on the path to become a more perfect union, then it can only happen if all of us are made to count, if all of us feel that our country continues to be a welcoming place, and if the inscription on the Statue of Liberty continues to shine in the 21st century for all of her people. So I thank the Caucus Foundation for this luncheon, for its work in advancing higher education for our scholarship recipients, and I remind all of us that our work is cut out for our community to help shape the future destiny of our country, of our democracy, and most importantly, how decent a society the United States of America will be in the 21st century. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Congressman Chuy Garcia, everyone. Tall orders, right? Now it's time to get to work. Lots of work to do there. Thank you, Congressman, so much for your time.
Um, also a reminder to attend the three C session. Um, I'd also like to add that the conference is going to resume in the marquee tent for conversation and coffee with all the Latino legislators if you want to go have some conversation. And that wraps it up. So thank you all for being such a wonderful, wonderful audience. Thanks for the seat. Have a great day.